talented young man, Jake Tapper. Today, Jim Jordan and some other guy. And I don't know Mark who. Mark Meadows. Mark Meadows. Oh, of course, Mark Meadows, the fascinating guy. Mark Meadows, the same Mark Meadows I've never heard of. Mark Meadows and Jim Jordan. He's from your neck of the woods. What's He's my like neck of the woods? Carolina. Where is he them? from? One of them. <laughs> Where are you from? Where are you from? I'm from Philadelphia. Philadelphia. He's, He's from Philadelphia. He's from Philadelphia, Pittsburgh. It's one of them. Anyways, he's not. He's really from North Carolina? It originally was one giant Carolina, wasn't it? You shut up. <laughs> I can't even remember what I was going to ask you now. I'm so angry. It's about impeaching uh, Rosenstein. Right. Rosenstein, who is the deputy attorney general and the guy who can, you know, fire Mueller. Yeah. And the guy who's kind of defending Mueller right yeah. now and not giving uh, Congress documents they've asked for that would kind of give away the investigation, really, because he's afraid they would probably just give it to the Trump administration. Just speaking, just two guys, right? Yeah, just okay. us. Just no us one else. Guys. Yeah. yeah, cameras are off. Um, they introduced articles of impeachment today. Yeah. Is, is there any rationale for them to do this? Not if you ask people like Trey Gowdy or Paul Ryan or... Republicans who are allies of President Trump. Then why would they do it? What's the point? Well, I, I, some people say that they're trying to force the hand of uh, Rosenstein to turn over more documents. But if I could say a larger, a larger point, not necessarily about Meadows and uh, and Jordan and and this move, but there is obviously a big move to undermine the Mueller investigation, and we see it all the time with all the witch hunt, the witch hunt, the hoax, big hoax. All a hoax, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's obviously a, a, you know, and this is something, every, you know, you get wrapped up in the politics of it all, but here's the bottom line. The United States was attacked. The United States was attacked by Russia. Now, it wasn't like Pearl Harbor. It was a cyber attack, and it was a disinformation campaign, but we were attacked, and there is this investigation to find out what happened. Now, part of the investigation has to do with Donald Trump and whether or not anybody in his orbit cooperated, but there's this other larger investigation about what happened and how can we prevent it from happening again. And there are a whole bunch of people in Washington who are trying to prevent the investigation from going forward. I mean, imagine if somebody tried to prevent the investigation into how Pearl Harbor happened from going forward. You would say that that person is not being patriotic. I don't know how, you know, the Mueller investigation will turn out or, or what, what history will actually prove over who knew what in the Trump administration or, or anywhere in the United States or who collaborated. But how do you think history is going to judge the people who didn't want to find out? Not very well. I mean, you know, it's obvious that people are doing things to protect President Trump and to protect the politics of this all. But this, has, this is beyond the politics of it all. It has to do with a sovereign nation being attacked by Russia. And we know this to be the case because the Trump administration itself says it. The deputy attorney general and the FBI, 12 Russian officials, military intelligence officials were indicted. Mm -hmm. The idea that there is now this, uh, people, people do this and, and, and there's no, almost no blowback the idea that there are people in Washington trying to undermine it, trying to stop it. They don't want the truth to come out about this, about an attack on the United States. It just blows, your, blows my mind every time I think about it because, you know, we all get wrapped up and then they're doing this and then they're trying this and then this group said that and this group filed this. At the end of the day, we were attacked. The American people were attacked. And that can't happen again. And the idea that there are members of Congress or whoever trying to stop an investigation from going forward into what happened so we can make sure it doesn't happen again, it's, it is... It's weird. It's weird. It's not just weird, it's unpatriotic. I mean, we want... <laughs> Which is weird. Here, here's, here's the thing, is that I've, I've got this increasing feeling that you know, you know how we said, uh, people said, oh, we can't let this, we can't let uh, Trump's behavior be normalized, or the, that there are, that facts don't matter be normalized. Right. I'm not sure if it's normalized, but I think weirdness in general has become normalized. I agree. As I was looking at the news today, and even as we're sort of rehearsing the show tonight, I was going through the monologue, and went, what is this feeling I have? This feeling I have is that this is so weird that everything seems weird. Like things that should be normal, like investigating, 
um, uh, being thwarted, they go, well, that feels weird. And that weirdness leaches into all the news, that feeling of weirdness. And after a while, I'm not sure what's real or not. And where my feelings are underneath the feeling, the pervasive feeling of just weirdness. Yeah. It's like it clouds your head and it clouds your emotions with just a sense of, of like, of confusion. And that, and that it, it, it's a very dark feeling. Well, and how could it not be, especially after Helsinki, when we saw the president of the United States standing next to the guy who led the attack on us in 2016, siding with him over U.S. intelligence, over the American people who were the victims of this attack, then the next day pretending that it all had to do with the fact that there, he said would instead of wouldn't, then even in that statement itself, was, oh, I take the word of the intelligence community that it was the Russians, although it could have been somebody else, a lot of people out there. He said that, by the way. There are a lot of, there are a lot of people out there. Fact check true, by the way. <laughs> there are a lot of people there out there. There are a lot. Yeah. Billions. Yes. So Billions of people. We just have to figure out, we just have to uh, bring in for questioning R Russians, uh, other people. Hillary. And, 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 then, and then everyone else. We know it was the Russians. It's the consensus of the intelligence community, even the House Intelligence but just Committee. Today, which is, just today, yeah. or, or yesterday, the Trump administration put out an official statement about not inviting Putin, like rescinding the offer, until the, quote, Russian witch hoax is... R r until the Russian witch hunt is over. Which is incredible because the guy who put out that statement, uh, Ambassador John Bolton, the national security advisor, is one of the strongest Russia, anti-Russia hawks in the country. And before he was the national security advisor, had incredibly strong things to say about the fact that the Russians attacked the United States. You know what that is, Jake? That's weird. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's hard to tell what's motivating people. I mean, the only thing I could guess is, is uh, being deferential to President Trump. But, it, but it's, it, it is odd, and that is, it also puts people like me in a weird position because we're just trying to say, this is the fact, this is the truth, this is actually what happened. And then you have people who don't want to accept it because it doesn't fit. Did you ever see that Twilight Zone episode with that little kid, Jimmy or Billy, who, like, does horrible things? And, and everybody wishes people into the cornfields. Wishes cornfield. people into cornfields. Yeah. That's what it's like. And everybody's like, yeah, Billy, you know, everybody's acting as if this is, they're just trying to appease this one person. Because they saw Scaramucci wished into the cornfield. Right. <laughs> With Reince Priebus, you know? They're right. all out in the cornfield right now. Right, but there is a certain amount of just, like, <laughs> dignity. Like, President Trump, at the very least, is not going to be president from January 2025 on. He's going to go. <laughs> There is a whole, I mean, a lot of these people, like, they're going to want to continue to have careers and lives. And we spend years, like, undermining your reputation, your dignity, the fact that you even care about the truth. I don't understand what, what the end game is for these people. Why, how, can you, how can you call an investigation into a Russian attack on the United States a witch hunt and still think that people are going to take you seriously? I don't, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's weird, as you point out. It's odd. Yeah. How about a, a section of one of your shows that goes, okay, now it's time for Don't Be Weird. <laughs> and you're going to ask somebody a question. goes, now, keep in mind, your answer can't be weird. There's a friend of mine who's in the army, and he uh, he came up with a, an idea for one. And he's not a particularly liberal guy, and uh, but it, I can't say it on TV. But he spells well, say it. it. Say it. He well, he wants a segment called it's spelled D A F U Q, <laughs> where it would just be like I would give the news, and he'd go. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Of course, you got the book, burning, is burning up the charts here, the Hellfire Club. Yeah, we were on the bestseller list for a little while. Yeah. Let's get, and you're back, because it's tonight, you're back. <laughs> we're bumping it. Jake, Thank good you to see so you much. again. The Lead airs weekdays on CNN, and the Hellfire Club is available now. Emmy-nominated Jake Tapper, everybody. We'll be right back with Michael Pena.